the Dutch Grand Prix, the moon landing, Princess Diana's wild ride, and Paul McCartney's bare feet. What do they all have in common? We've been lied to by the mainstream media. Teams releasing statements after the race. Hashtag F1 Fix trending on Twitter for days. Government spies dressed up as pigeons at turn 7. Buckle up everybody because we're going down the rabbit hole. At the Dutch Grand Prix, Max Verstappen's home race, even though he was born in Belgium and lives in Monaco. That's the first lie. On lap 47, he was in the lead of the race with both Mercedes behind him. But Mercedes were going to the end of the race on a one-stopper and Max had to pit again. Things were looking good for Mercedes. But then, a CIA agent, disguised as Yuki Tsunoda, pulled over to the side of the track with a mysterious problem nobody could understand. Even the team said, what the fuck are you playing at? After some confusion, Yuki sets off again and drives back to the pit lane very slowly. When he gets back to the pit lane, his mechanics give him a hand job in broad daylight. After Yuki had been fully drained, he came back out of the pit lane only to pull over to the side of the track again, this time causing a virtual safety car. Suspicious. Verstappen, Hamilton and Russell all pit for new tyres, essentially ruining Mercedes' strategy and handing the win to Verstappen. The virtual safety car ends and Verstappen fucks off into the distance, leaving Mercedes behind. Now, things are looking good for Red Bull. But then, a CIA agent disguised as Valerie Bottas stopped at the end of the main straight, bringing out the full safety car. I am so fucking hard. Verstappen pits and comes back out in third behind both Mercedes. He's given up the lead of the race for brand new tyres to fight them when the race restarts, a very aggressive strategy. Now things are looking spicy. But then, another CIA agent disguised as George Russell demanded Mercedes pit him as well. So, George stopped for new tyres and came back out behind Verstappen. Now we've got Lewis Hamilton at the front on old tyres, with Max Verstappen right behind him on brand new tyres for the safety car restart. The ghost of Michael Massey appeared in the sky before Verstappen overtakes Lewis, Russell overtakes Lewis, Charles Leclerc overtakes Lewis. Hamilton comes on the radio, I can't believe you guys fucking screwed me, can't tell you how pissed I am. Max Verstappen wins the race, Lewis finishes fourth and hashtag team LH have an end of civilization event on Twitter and it was kind of funny to watch now to explain the team LH apocalyptic meltdown I actually attempted to do a live stream so I could go into more detail and figure out exactly what happened but all we figured out was that I'm an idiot who doesn't know how to do a live stream is this on? Are we on? How the f*** do I know if this is on? How the f*** do I turn this c*** on now? I swear down on me nan's... Are we on? Uh, oh, f***. Come on, you c***. Let's just try that. You're such a dumb f***ing sack of shit. I'm not dumb. I've got street smarts. So I will pick up where I left off. On the Team LH hit list today, we have Yuki Tsunoda for causing the virtual safety car. Sergio Perez for causing a yellow flag. Sergio Perez for racing with Lewis Hamilton. Sebastian Vettel for ignoring blue flags, which to be fair was fucking diabolical. Red Bull chief strategist for doing her job and look at that little smirk. The ghost of Michael Massey and George Russell. Now, I haven't got the emotional strength to go through every set of insane tweets for each one of these people but the George Russell ones are the funniest so George's crime was taking control of the strategy himself telling the team he wanted to pit for new tires getting it right overtaking Lewis and finishing second an obvious hate crime after the race he posted this on Twitter and in the comments section they went after him like piranhas. You suck. Lewis Hamilton is way better than you and you couldn't take one for the team and just finish on the podium. Valerie Bass was such a better teammate. You are a very, very selfish player. Hamilton is not your rival. Shame on you. You literally just stole a win from Lewis and gave it to Max Verstappen. You will never amount to even a tenth of the driver or person Lewis is. He will be remembered as the GOAT and you another forgettable number two driver. These are real people. Sorry, George, but I lost every last bit of respect I had for you after that stunt you pulled. I refuse to support you if you are not prepared to play the team game. 500 likes. It's not just a few people. Hope Lewis doesn't play the team game for you either. What you did today was a disgrace. He's literally not on the podium because of your selfish behavior. Delete this. Teamwork makes the dream. Oh, this one is my favorite.
Teamwork makes the dream work, just a reminder, be careful how you treat people on your way up because you might meet them on your way down. Selfishness gains no honour. And somebody replied with a picture that said, the saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from your enemies. Why, why are they making it out like George Russell rammed Lewis off the track and then shagged his mum? For God's sake. And also, you couldn't just type that out. You had to make a picture and then not crop it properly. Team LH are the stupidest people on the internet. But they were just getting started because after they had attacked the entire world, then they turned on themselves. This is the official Twitter page for Team LH. And let me make this absolutely clear. These are the normal Hamilton fans. Yes, they do exist. You won't find any toxic, nasty, stupid tweets on their page. They tweet things like, we can't talk about today's race without mentioning and praising the hard work that the mechanics and the pit crew have put in today. Triple headers are tough and the hard work should always be acknowledged. Yes, normal. And even after Lewis got absolutely shagged at the end of the race, they didn't have a mental breakdown. They didn't start attacking George. That's P4 in Zanvor. Easily a win or a podium, but this is racing and anything can happen until the very last lap. Thank you, Team LH, for the support. Blah, blah, blah. I wanted to show you these to prove there are normal people that support Lewis Hamilton. And they need to be protected from their own people. Let me explain. Team LH issued a statement condemning the abuse Red Bull chief strategist received from the crazy Hamilton fans. A statement that Lewis Hamilton himself retweeted. And this triggered a very complicated sequence of events. So complicated, I had to make a diagram to explain it. Are you ready for the diagram? These fucking people. Right, I had to write this down. First, Team LH issue a statement condemning the crazy Hamilton fans for being pure knobs. Lewis Hamilton himself retweets it. Then, people started attacking the pure knobs for being pure knobs. This allowed the pure knobs to turn themselves into victims. That's important. Because then the pure knobs bullied Team LH into deleting the statement and issuing an apology to the pure knobs for exposing them as pure knobs. Then all of the normal Hamilton fans started criticising Team LH for backing down to the pure knobs. You lot really got pressured by your own fan base to delete a tweet Hamilton himself liked. So basically you called out the bigots, the bigots got mad and you apologised to the bigots. Team LH calling out Team LH for toxic behaviour. Now Team LH turns against Team LH. It feels like a civil war. I have brain damage. Welcome to F1 Twitter. So who is the woman at the center of all of this? Her name is Big Brain Hannah. She is the principal strategy engineer for Red Bull Racing. She has a master's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Cambridge and received a fancy award for, and I quote, outstanding use of language as a means of researching, realizing, and communicating an engineering project into the use of solar energy in Chile, otherwise known as Big Brain. When you compare her to Ferrari's head of strategy, you start to understand why Ferrari are a thousand points behind in the championship. And speaking of Ferrari, the next race is at Monza, their home Grand Prix, and it's on 9-11. I'm not going to do anything with that because I don't want to get blocked again. But they've already started fucking things up. The lorry that was transporting the engines to the circuit broke down because the brakes caught fire. Actually, that's clever. Get all the stupid things out of the way now before you even arrive. And when they did arrive, they unveiled a special livery to commemorate a hundred years at Monza. A hundred years. That's almost how long Carlos Sainz's pit stop took at the Dutch Grand Prix. Yeah, they actually lost a wheel during a pit stop. And then in the next pit stop, they got a five second penalty for an unsafe release. I have been screaming about Ferrari for two videos in a row, but I've never actually offered any real solutions. So, here is the real solution. Fire all the Italians. Hear me out. The last time Ferrari was genuinely incredible, there were no Italians in sight. The team principal was French, the technical director was British, the drivers were a German and a Brazilian, the chief designer was from South Africa, the chief strategist was from Kent, and his name was Nigel. Nigel from Kent is the exact 
opposite of Italian. So Ferrari will never be successful until they fire all the Italians. F1 Twitter won't be safe again until Team LH finishes destroying themselves. Pigeons don't exist and the championship has now been corrupted by the CIA. Now before I terminate this broadcast, I would like to pay my respects to the Queen, who died yesterday. She passed away at the age of 562 after almost a thousand years of service. And in that time, she wore many hats, fired a machine gun, and murdered Princess Diana. A truly remarkable lifetime of achievement. So I would like to dedicate this video to her. R.I.P. Lizzie, and shout out to her family. R.I.P. Lizzie, shout out to her family. R.I.P. Lizzie. I still have a dream. R.I.P. Lizzie. Shout out to her family. Will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? Shout out to her family. R.I.P. Lizzie. R.I.P. R.I.P. Lizzie. Shout out to her <clears throat> That's going to look really weird in the edit. Let's keep it respectful.